Hey friends, so as you might have heard, last week Figma announced a new feature called Smart Animate that brings animation and interactivity into the prototyping that you can do within Figma. It's very exciting for design nerds like me, and probably you if you're watching this. Instead of playing around with this new feature just by myself in my office, I decided that I might as well record the process of me trying this feature out for the first time. I'm still alone in my office, I guess, but uh, you're kind of here too inside the camera, right? So this is going to be my absolute first impressions of this new feature, this new tool inside of Figma. And it seems to be something similar to auto animate inside Adobe XD. So let's dive in and test this out and you can watch as I try to use this for the first time. I may fail miserably or maybe I will make something really cool. So here we are in Figma and all I've done so far was open up a file and then I clicked into the prototype section because I guessed that's probably where I'd find this animation stuff. And then this little window here popped up introducing Smart Animate. So I obviously guessed correctly. I'm going to try and animate this menu that I have been designing. It's a drop down mega menu that is going to be across our site. And it'd be cool if I could mock it up and show the developer that I work with, Corey, how exactly I want like this little arrow to spin and then this white block to appear when you open the menu. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be what I'm going to try and animate. Um, I'm a stubborn designer and I want to just try and figure out if I can do this by myself first before I look at tutorials and that sort of thing. I also think that's kind of a good test of how intuitive a product is, you know, but before I close this window, I'm going to click on this learn more button um, and just have that open in another tab in case I decide that I do need it and I get stuck. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to create a connection, select a frame or object and use the circular node. Yep to drag it towards. I'm going to assume that I should probably group everything inside this menu first because I have not done that yet. Um, yep, I'm a terribly messy when it comes to design files. The secret is out. Okay, we'll group that and I'm going to call this uh, menu. Okay, and actually I'm just going to duplicate this frame before I go ahead and mess up this file that I've put together for Corey to build from. Okay. So heading into prototyping, interaction. So I want to have an interaction on this button here that when you click on it, what's going to happen? Okay. Open an overlay. Ooh, or swap with. Okay. Maybe I should be reading the instructions. Let's go swap with, and I guess I'll swap it out for one that has the features arrow turned the other way. Ooh, which reminds me, it actually needs to start this way around. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so when you click on this, you're going to swap it with um, something else. I'm going to duplicate this and have this one be the open state, right? And then this one here be the closed state. So this menu will be, do I have to shrink it up, do we think? Or Turn it off. I don't know. I'm just going to try that for now. Okay. So when you click on this, we're going to swap it out with, let's give this a name so that I can recognize it. Um, I probably should have said at the start of this video that I don't really have much experience doing animated prototyping in any tool. Really. I've played around with Adobe XD a little bit at Adobe max last year in a workshop. Um, but aside from that, my experience creating animations has been coding the thing in JavaScript, usually to be honest, by copying, pasting and like tweaking stuff. I don't know if I can code it from scratch, but also using Webflow, using Webflow interactions is my main way that I've been able to create cool animated stuff for the web. So um, I'm probably not coming at this with the best background. I'm just going to give that disclaimer now, which I probably should have said at the start of the video. But okay, we're going to swap this out with animations test open. I guess, um, do I have to play to see how that works? Let's see. Okay, so if I click on it, it just opens. Okay, well, that's not super exciting. Let's try something else. Oh, okay. So I did not <laughs> use the animated part. Let's click Smart Animate and we'll see what happens when we do that. What? Wait, can I go back and do that again? That's pretty cool. 
Because that is what I was imagining for the arrow, that it would like spin around like that. And I wonder if I had shrunk this guy, if it would have automatically expanded. Let's try that. So I'm going to try shrinking this, which doesn't fully do what I expected, and then turning it off. Let's just see how that goes. Boo. Um, okay, let's think about this. I wonder if I need it to actually open an overlay. I kind of want it to do both. I want, when I click on this, I want it to swap it out with this version of the features thing, but also add an overlay. But let's just see what that does. Hmm. Again, not what I expected. I think um, why I'm struggling with this is because, like I said, I'm bringing my Webflow interaction knowledge to this and trying to do it with that, where um, in Webflow I would build out a sort of like a timeline of the animation that I wanted to happen. And so that's just how my brain thinks about animations now. Um, and that's not how this is working. Um, okay, I can't figure out by myself. It is time to look at some tutorials. Okay, so that video is really helpful. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description because it turns out probably should have watched that first. But like I said, I do like to see how far I can get with a tool before I have to look for outside help on it. Okay, so um, that video was really helpful. It showed a few examples and I feel like I have an idea of what I could do now to make this work for me. Um, let me see if I'm correct. So I think the problem is I'm using swap with. I think I need to use um, navigate to perhaps? Apparently turning on this feature, smart animate matching layers, will mean everything that is the same between these two files is gonna stay in the same place and it's only the extra stuff or the stuff that's changed that will animate. So I'm gonna to expect to see this drop down. Um, I'm slightly concerned the arrow might drop down too, which is what I don't want, but let's see. Let's test it. That is pretty close to what I wanted. Click this, this drops in. Um, the one problem though, is that it's coming in on top of this bar. So I think I can solve that with some like rearranging of my layers. Let's see if I duplicate this rectangle and bring it up to be about that big. Can you see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of aiming to have a background on my navigation uh, and then have the menu block beneath it. So hopefully it should drop in behind that. Let's see if that worked. It did. Okay, now I should be able to, I suppose, take this and have it go back the other way, right? Um, apparently I can just drag this. Yep, great. Um, we're gonna go move in and smart animate again. Let's try this. Ooh, not so nice. Um, I wonder if my problem there was my menu on this one is hidden. What if instead of having it turned off, I just completely lower the opacity? Then maybe it'll fade, I don't know. Nope. <laughs> Let's put this guy back over here. And what if I just bring in, oop, nope, we want him on the canvas still. They're like up there. Let's see. That's pretty exciting. I wonder if I can do also, cause I wanted to show um, what the hover state is gonna be like on this menu. I have it sitting here as a separate thing. So we're hovering on this, we're gonna show hover. And we can just dissolve in, that will be fine. Menu opens, we hover, we hover off. I think I can mess with the timing of this a little bit too. It's a bit slow. 
that's better. That's more like it. That seems more fun. So it's happening pretty quickly, but my gray box is going from zero to 100% opacity and also it's expanding and filling the, the shape. Okay, so I've ended up being able to do what I hoped I could do, which was mock up how this thing should work for Corey. So I click this, the arrow spins around, this drops down. But also when you're hovering, this gray background will come over the area and make it clear that it's all clickable. So yeah, this is really fun. I'm really excited about this feature in Figma. Auto animate in Adobe XD kind of blew my mind a little bit at Adobe Max last year, but because like I said, animation isn't a huge part of my workflow, I decided it wasn't really worth switching tools and learning a whole new workflow and all of that just to get some animation in for a few pieces here and there. But have config me now, it's pretty awesome and I'm definitely gonna try make use of it. I'm gonna experiment some more with all these other options for easing and all that and uh, get to know the tool a little bit better. But I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle my way through getting to know this. Um, and if you're wanting to dive in and start learning how to use animation features in Figma as well, then I don't know, maybe the things I learned during this are things that will help you as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me while I learned how to use Smart Animate. Hope you have a good week and I'll see you in my next video.